welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you've had a good week and that you've enjoyed your weekend. We certainly have. It was a crazy election week, but it was great to see democracy at work, the largest turnout in U.S. history. You guys did it. Everybody voted, which is fantastic. No matter who you voted for, at least your vote counts. Okay, this week we're preparing for the arrival of Ever, and we'll take about a week to get all the orders out. Uh, we expect the books in our warehouse by the end of next week. Okay. So probably Thanksgiving week they'll go out. Uh, maybe a few days sooner, maybe a few days later, just according to when the shipment gets here uh, from Canada. And we will, in that same shipment, will be the soft covers. So um, once we get the hardcover orders out, we will definitely put the soft cover up on the website. Good. So it'll be available. And it's $17.99. Okay. Um, also, next weekend, Comic Art Fans is having a live sale. We'll be posting 24 pages uh, for sale on Saturday and 24 on Sunday. And it's my understanding that the pages that don't sell on Saturday will also be forwarded to their Sunday right. sale. So check that out at comicartfans.com. Um, there, I think a lot of people are participating, so there will be a lot of art to look at. And if you've never been there, it's a wonderful place to see a lot of art from people who buy comic art. And they, they put their collections up on and you can see everything from comic book and comic strip history, illustrators, wonderful place to visit. So we've never done this. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to uh, have another avenue. So that's really all I have this week. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Well, I'm excited about the coming year. I'm excited about doing the new series, Serial. You've been doing a lot of writing on that. Mm -hmm. So getting there mentally and start drawing it uh, this week. So I'm okay. very excited. So are you ready to get on the hot seat? Okay, sound effects. Okay, your first question is from Sean Meyer. And he asked, this is kind of a technical long question, so listen to me carefully. Okay. Look at me, pay attention. Got it. <laughs> How do you set your scanner to digitize your pages and best capture the inks but leave out any unwanted marks? I have an Epson scanner that can scan in black and white mode to leave out my blue line pencils and the blue Bristol guidelines, but it also seems to result in not as sharp of a black ink line as in some of the blacks are being knocked out. Have you experienced this and do you have any workflow solutions? P.S. I've tried scanning in color and eliminating the blue lines in Procreate, but it seems to remove some of the sharpness of the blacks as well. Thank you. It is tricky. That's a very in-depth question. Uh, and solving that dilemma has a lot to do with how the quality of your comic art on the printed page. Um, I've suffered on both sides. So I think that what I've taken to doing lately is, of course, you scan at very high resolution so that you have a lot of forgiveness. And what is that to. resolution? Well, in grayscale, I, I scan at 800 DPI, and in bitmap, I scan at 1200, sometimes 1600 if it's a cover. Um, that's twice as high as people tell you you need to, but when you get into uh, Photoshop later, uh, and you're passing, you're working on your file, you need the highest resolution you can to have that clarity. So that when you zoom up all the way up to 100%, um, you're getting the real ink line, the real line. If you go low DPI on your bitmap, um, when you zoom up in Photoshop, you're gonna see aliasing, that jagged aliasing. And when you zoom it back down to the comic book size, Somehow it really does show. Uh, it'll have some sort of a little, um, not the smooth line that you did with your, with you know, you can tell. What I've taken to doing lately is scanning in color. So I'll scan in color at say 800 DPI, then I go in to Photoshop, and instead of trying to uh, erase. Uh, the blue lines, um, I go in there and I get rid of the blue lines and things I don't want by having to use the copy stamp. 
and you'll copy the area of the paper next to the drawing. And then you get in there with your copy stamp and you go down the line and fix, the, get rid of the, you know, whatever line you don't want. And so it's very tedious. It's not the same thing as like scan a bitmap, dial up the blacks, dial down the whites, that kind of thing. It's a little more uh, involved, but what you end up with finally is every nuance of your art is on the file, is on the image, and you clean it up by hand instead of just trying to dial it out with the uh, contrast dialers. I hope that makes sense. All I heard was wah wah, wah wah, wah wah, wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick. I, I think start off with high res scans and work in color, uh, and then go into your, if you're going to have a black and white book, uh, convert, convert it all to grayscale, and then get in there and do it by hand with the uh, copy stamp. Um, because of, of, you can't use just a race because you will actually have paper texture back there, not just flat white, uh, which you would have in bitmap. In color, you're going to have the paper texture. So you have to copy the paper texture and get in there and do the erasing with that. Jeez. So if you were doing it in color, you don't have to be quite as careful. You would still have to do all this uh, fixing uh, to get rid of blue lines or stray lines. Um, but you're doing it in color, and it's just um, even more critical to match. No, I mean if you're if it was going to be in, published in color. Oh, yeah. I, well, what I would do, like for instance, if I'm doing a cover and which is in color, I uh, I eventually get my uh, scan to grayscale so that I can easily work with simple, uh, you know, simple grayscale. Color complicates getting in there and making corrections. And I am just give, I can just give a grayscale line drawing to my colorist, and then he adds his colors on top of that. So I didn't have to be I don't have to have my pencils in color. He just has to have his stuff in color. Okay. Complicated. I don't get any of it, but I'm just saying okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I the words I got were scanner and colorist. <laughs> when it comes to comics, uh, it's it's a labor of love. There's a lot of steps and a lot of uh, precision involved, and you learn by mistake, you know. So, I made a mistake in my fixes forever. Uh, when I did the fixes, when I did ever, I used a blue line pencil to do my um, lettering, of course, you know, to mark off my grid for lettering. Well, when I did any repairs, it's on um, a piece of removable um, label. I put it on there and I do the new lettering and it has blue pencil under it. Well, when I scanned it, that blue pencil didn't go away in my scans. And I had to go in and hand delete all the little blue lines underneath my lettering on the fixes in Ever. And you did a lot of rewriting on Ever. So you had a lot of fixes. I had a lot of fixes. <laughs> <laughs> it took me two days to clean the art in Photoshop forever. So I was not happy about the fact, I thought, why didn't I just use a pencil to do my lettering lines and it all would have erased so easy before I scanned it. Nope. So have you ever done a, a tutorial on that thing with the holes in it? Yeah, the, the uh, letter guide, lettering guide, Ames yeah. lettering guide. Yeah, have you ever done a tutorial on that? Um, I think I have. I guess most people don't letter on the page anymore, so. Yeah, um, most people. They don't, don't need it. This is what you did a hundred years before your computer Wacom lettering. <laughs> this is so old school. I mean, I think it was probably invented in the '30s. Um, the first one was probably made out of buffalo hair. That's how old it is. But it works, and if you're dealing with paper and a drawing board, might as well do the same thing they did in 1960, um, because that's how our favorite comics were made. So. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for your second question? Yes. What are you getting, it, Robin, for longer. Christmas? Oh, a new car. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> a boat. Look, Marge, a bowling ball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Your question is, who has been your most challenging character to draw? That's a good question. Wow. I want to be honest and give an honest answer. 
in the beginning it was Kachu, and I almost wrote her out of the story because it was hard to get her hair right. I wanted her to look sloppy, but I didn't know how to do that really, and I didn't do it very well. But I tried. I learned as I went. One character that was hard for me to get right was Francine's mother, because in the story I let her age. So I'm drawing this woman who ages over the course of the story. And to get her to look like herself from her first appearance to where she ended up was a real trick. It's hard to draw somebody aging and make it look honest. And on the flip side, what is your what was your most the easiest character for you to draw? Big. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest character to draw is Big in uh, uh, Motor Girl. And that's because that's my natural cartooning style. That's just how I've been cartooning since I was a kid. So, um, if that's my, it, like Jeff has been drawing bone since he was a kid. I've been drawing that big like looking character since I was a kid. So, so it just comes naturally. Yeah, I didn't even need to pencil him. I would just say, Vic goes here. <laughs> <laughs> and I could do it all, you know. So, Have you ever thought about doing a whole uh, really cartoony, like one shot? I would love that. Uh, I need to. I need to think about that more seriously about doing that. It would be. I don't know. I, I think if we I don't came know up that anybody would story, like it. I know <laughs> it's not what people are looking for from me. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's Maybe definitely something. Maybe you could put that like. hair on him. You know, that may be like uh, somebody uh, known doing something else, but they like to play the banjo, so they put out a banjo CD. <laughs> may not be what you want. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll put out my banjo comic, yeah. Okay, so uh, I think you're drawing today. You already held up the page that you are doing. By the way, Terry did his tutorial before we did this interview today. And so he started with this drawing in his tutorial, and miraculously it was completed <laughs> before he started the tutorial. Yeah, I, I, this it's is like a magic. Drawing. This is a drawing that's going to be that we kind of fiddle with in the tutorial, but I just kind of tweaked it here and just kind of finished it out. So, um, so what are you drawing today? Well, as you can tell, we're drawing sad. No, we're drawing happy, and I want to show the different ways of uh, drawing happy, the nuances, and how the eyes are so important uh, to to work with, cooperate with the mouth to get all the little variations of happy. Okay. The trick. Well, uh, good luck to you with that. Thank you. I need it. <laughs> and you guys have a great week, and we'll meet you back here next Sunday. Okay. Meet me right here. Okay. So here's just a basic uh, pleasant um, expression. And I think that um, if you wanted to make this false, you would keep the mouth where it is and then make the lie up in the eyes. Um, that's a strange thing to say, isn't it? I'll show you what I mean. The eyes at this point look like they're uh, alive and really taking in what they're looking at. If you were to make the eyes a little more jaded looking, which is a little bit like, I'm on the verge of shutting the door on this, This eye is getting uh, brown because of the uh, erasing, but there. Same mouth and change the eyes now. And she's either drunk or dubious. <laughs> I don't know which one she is, but I left the mouth alone. And if I were to continue to and reinforce the smile of the mouth, it would just become more and more like dubious and sarcastic or, you know, other things besides just sheer joy. Um, so let me show you this. Let's get rid of the dubious eyes. Go back to the happy eyes.
Okay. Back to square one. Happy. And do like this with a little bit of pull up on one side. And now it's happy in conversation. Like that. And that's just by having the mouth open and being in a conversation. Um, I think you could go for a much bigger emotion by just going for the, the big smile. Cheek to cheek, all the way. And again, I, we can, I guess we can Let's go with what we were talking about a second ago, where you put the put the lip right on the teeth. So there is where you're looking at just the top teeth, like that. Which is kind of like um, a very charming way to um, to smile while you're still in conversation with someone. And typically what you would do is, you know, the teeth are going back once they get past the eye tooth here and then the fang. <laughs> and then that's why you see that little dark side on the back. Uh, like that. And it's really important. As you see, I'm making all these adjustments. Where that bottom lip is and how fat it is really makes so much difference. Okay, this is conversation, and it may be a little bit too much. Right there, there you go. So that's a smiling conversation. Uh, that's not like beaming, like, oh, I, you just want a new car. This is more like, hi, how are you, type of smile. So let's go to, you just want a trip to Hawaii. And now we're going to get the big smile, both rows of teeth, top and bottom, which means this bottom lip's going to be much bigger. That's a big smile. That's the beauty queen smile. Um, that's the take a picture smile. But the eyes are with the um, relaxed eyes. They're not reinforcing this emotion below. So these eyes are, could be doing a number of, any number of other expressions. I'm sorry for my dry COVID hands. I wash my hands so much. Um, I think the trick to this is to the eyes close. As, as the mouth comes really back, it pushes this up, which pushes that up, which pushes that up. So you get that uh, thing that you know they teach you in animation school day one how to get the big smiles and that's how you do it your eyes close because everything is in motion around them and here's where it really helps to have the eyelashes uh, to help reinforce this and um, things would be happening with your your eyebrows they, they can do all kinds of things. Some people, the eyebrows would be up like this. I'm drawing too quick. <laughs> like that. That's happy. Uh, and then the eyebrows uh, make, give it a certain kind of happiness like uh, she's just been complimented or something pleasant has happened. If you were to change the eyebrows, it would have a lot to do with uh, what kind of happy it is. So you thought it was all gonna be about the mouth, didn't you? But it's not, because this stuff has to reinforce it. Now that's more like happiness at a dinner with friends and somebody says something funny or, you know, uh, a more, I'm happy and that's funny, but it's not like I want a new car. It's more like 
yeah, I'm right about something or that what you just said was really funny. Um, and it has to do with what's going up on up here. This can get different eyes and it can change, you know, how that happy works. Um, when it comes to body language, um, you'll notice that um, when they're teaching you how to cartoon, one of the first things they'll teach you is, you know, body language like that's down in the dumps, uh, loser, uh, anti-hero, um, nothing about this picture looks happy, right? Especially if we can get this guy with his head down. That's, you know, you can turn that into a drawing of Superman and you would still get the entire realistic drawing of Superman to, to note this simple emotion here. But if a character is happy, um, it kind of brings this, their spirit back to life. And if I tell this guy, oh, um, and let's go with the car thing again. You just want a new car. I what? Or we just paid off all your bills. What? <laughs> How is this possible? You're going to get the spine erect. Um, everything wakes up. This is kind of like, I'm on my way to a fetal position and then into the ground in the grave. <laughs> this is more like, um, you know, good things come from uh, the good thing God above or whatever, and you rise in spirit, wake up, and now you're projecting to the world. And that's kind of what that whole body language thing is all about. When you're doing expressions, you're just only having this to work with. So, you know, in comics, so many times the framing is like that. And that's what you're trying to denote. Uh, you don't always get a chance to draw full length in comics. So that's why we focus so much on the expressions. Um, it's like she's, she's happy, and then I don't have room to draw, you know, everything that goes down here. <laughs> She's, there's her all the way up. I mean, this drawing, if I drew it, finished it, it she would be four feet tall on the paper. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things where you really focus on the face and try to get as many expressions as you can to match the face. Um, and I just wanted to point out that it's not always about the mouth. It's kind of like a, a game with dolls where you're matching the top and the bottom half. Um, Here's a good example um, of an unusual expression, but I've seen people do it, where they're biting their uh, knuckle uh, because somebody is saying something and they can't believe it, and uh, they get these cute little uh, ticks or perks about them about how they react. And you can see the eyes narrowed up a little bit and the top row of teeth. We don't see the bottom row, but they're on the other side of that knuckle. And then... David's very pleasant um, smile with the narrowed eyes. Uh, greatest night of my life. And when he says it like this, you believe him. You know he's telling the truth. And they're sharing a very happy moment here. So um, that's all I wanted to show, really. I just wanted to uh, point out that um, um, the face works together. And when you get uh, a show of real joy like this, um, it's usually followed by a physical expression <laughs> of joy. This is also pure joy. Uh, Casey jumping right at uh, David and begging him to marry her. <laughs> so lots of type of happiness and a lot of uh, variations on the spectrum. Uh, you know, so you can't go too wrong. Just make sure that the um, eyes and the mouth uh, work together to get the emotion you want. Um, if you want uh, to be sarcastic, the eyes uh, are where you're going to find it. You still get the mouth to smile or pull up at one corner, and then the eyes is where sarcasm is and doubt and dubious and all those other complicated emotions, you know. Um, so, enjoy. <laughs>